WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Two years into this pandemic, and most of us are vaccinated, and maybe you've already had COVID, maybe you're boosted as well, and most people are moving on. Mass mandates were lifted, folks are returning to the office, people are booking vacations, and it's such a relief, and it's exciting, but it is important to remember, for a few, the fight continues on. They're COVID long haulers. They still have symptoms months after their first positive test. Doctors say somewhere around 30% of people who got COVID can develop these long-term symptoms. Who is more likely to become a long hauler is still up in the air. Doctors say the number of symptoms someone has when they're infected may be a clue, though, as to whether or not they'll suffer in the long term. Joining us today, former state representative Trisha Cotham, who happens to be running once again now in the 112th district. She is a COVID long hauler. Uh, Trisha, thanks for coming on. We know that uh, as of this morning that you've had a, a rough go of it. Um, where are you at in, in your recovery right now? Well, I'm, I'm certainly still in recovery and the recovery has improved. January and February were the absolute worst. March has been a little bit better, but it's also just very unpredictable. I thought the morning um, would be easy and okay, and it's proven that is not the case. So I think that's what's really hard about having long COVID is there really isn't one clear path to get better. There's not one drug to cure this. Um, so you always are kind of in wondering and limbo and just wanting to know, is this ever going to end? And am I, am I going to have vertigo my whole life or a high heart rate? Um, so that part is hard. Uh, and give us the history here. I think you actually got COVID a couple of times. Um, when did it first happen? And then did you have continue to have symptoms or was there, how did this play out in the last year or so? So January of 2020, I had done some international travel. Uh, about the end of January of 2020, I became extremely sick. I could not stay up. I had severe nausea. Um, I did not have a fever. And I asked my doctor, you know, could it be this virus from China? Because that's what it was referred as right in that very beginning. And he said, no, nausea doesn't go with it. And you would have to have a fever of 105. So weeks went on, um, it was absolutely, I mean, I thought I was going to die. It was that bad. Um, I started to feel better about four, about four months afterwards and everyone was in lockdown then. <laughs> and then last year, March of 21, I got COVID again. And the symptoms were not as severe. Um, but the after symptoms were the, the part that was very concerning for me. And there's not a lot of research that has been done. There is more now, but last year, no. And I went to several doctors because I had extremely high blood pressure, extremely high heart rate. My pulse was really, really high and I was having a lot of dizziness. And sometimes I would faint. And multiple doctors just said, well, put you on blood pressure medication. We'll give you something for the vertigo. Um, but that didn't really solve why is this happening. And if you try to solve your own medical issue on Dr. Google, you're thinking to yourself you're going to die. So I finally found another doctor who um, understood long haul COVID and was interested. And so I was diagnosed then but no one was really using that term and it didn't mean much. And things did start to improve. And you got in a third time then in, in January? Is that when, when it happened a third time? Yeah, so this year of January, um, started feeling pretty bad and thought, no, this can't happen to me again. Well, I, you know, took a test and sure enough, it was and um, got placed into a long haul clinic, which was now 
available and became just extremely, extremely sick from Omicron. And it was scary. I, I had to go to the emergency room, urgent care a lot. It, it was just a really hard time. Mm -hmm. And I'm how, still in that recovery process. How does it impact your, your, your daily life right now? Certainly it is better. Um, I'm finding myself able to do more things during the day. I think better, you hear the term brain fog. I certainly experienced that and that was a very strange feeling. I do feel that is getting better. The vertigo has subsided. So I'm able to do some normal things and at the same time, but I do take a lot of medications, a lot of inhalers. I get IVs, all that still goes on today. You are, you've decided to run for state house again uh, after a few years away. Why, given the, the um, traumatic situation you've been through over the last two years? Sure, and I, and I think that traumatic situation is the real reason why, you know, when you're sick with COVID, you're pretty isolated, you're alone, and you don't have that much to do. And I really just started reflecting on where do I go from here? What's my next step in life? And, you know, you write things down and everything always came back to public service because that's truly what I am at heart from being an educator here to a legislator. And I had had some people tell me about this new district um, but I wasn't ready to just look at it. And then I had more people telling me, you know, you live in this new district, this would be great. And um, so I really just thought about it and prayed about it and told my mom about it and uh, didn't tell anybody else. <laughs> how has what you've been through, how will that change the way you approach public service and policy? Sure. Um, I think that the next big wave of COVID that we are going to have is long COVID. I think there needs to be a tremendous amount of more funding for research for trials and our UNC hospitals, Duke, all of these universities are very equipped to do that. And I just became more inspired that I want to be a setting example. I was very transparent about my COVID and um, I just would like to have the honor to serve the new people in this new district. Your history in public service is well known around uh, the greater Charlotte area and I know I speak on behalf of everybody who's seen your struggle through social media um, that we are all thinking about you and we hope you get better uh, and we wish you and your family nothing but the best. Thank you, Ben, so much. All right, more Flashpoint after this.